welcome to Kiki's Chat Show. Today is the 27th of January. I, I, was, I nearly said February, which is really not good. Um, we're in January, we're still in January. This is the last, I think, um, Wednesday in January. Um, I want to wish you all the last Happy New Year. If I haven't seen you, Happy Make New it Year. Because I'm not going public. To... Sorry? Make it public, please. It's on friends only. Um, I will make it public. So, um, my guest has just thrown my brain somewhere else. Um, I'm sorry. We are in a, a situation where people have, keep dying every day. And it's not just us hearing it in the news, but we hear it from friends or family. We know people who die now. And that is the seriousness of it. Here in the UK, where I'm speaking to you from, over 10,000 people have died in the UK, uh, you know, up till now, up till today. And that is very worrying. It's very disconcerting. It is something which you can't put your mind on because you will think that it's just an illness and we don't even believe that people are dying and suddenly they're telling you that 10, 100,000, over 100,000 people have died, but they have. And people have been ill, et cetera, et cetera. We need to think deeply about our safety, our children's safety, and how we will get out of this situation alive. Now, I know that the cynics out there will say nobody gets out of this world alive. It is true. It's all true. But while you're alive, you are responsible for yourself. Today, my guest is Charlene Efwa. She's been on the show several times. She is an author, a thinker, a storyteller. She is also an artist and a creative innovator. She's a beautician, she is a law student, she is a consultant and a political commentator. So basically, she's got her finger in every possible pie you can think of. And that is challenging sometimes for people like us who only do two things. I only know two things, two. So there you go. Welcome to the show, Charlene. Thank you, Candy. Um, today the topic is something that we're all kind of a little bit confused about. So the topic is, why is COVID-19 a stigma? It is a stigma in some communities. It is a stigma in some countries. It is not mentioned at all in some areas uh, i'll tell you something before we even start this discussion someone i know's daughter died a guy i know his daughter passed away a few weeks ago and then my very good friend calls me and she's telling me about it before i even said what happened to her she said oh no it's not COVID." It's not COVID. It can't be COVID. It's not. And I said, but I haven't even mentioned COVID. Why are you saying that? She said, oh, you know, it's not COVID. So I asked her, is COVID a sexually transmitted disease? She said, A situation where COVID kills you're just talking to somebody. So let us talk about it today. Let us try and thrash out exactly what we think COVID is. Now, people out there, I I, I invite you 
to join us in this discussion so that if you have an idea or if you know something medical you want to join us before we go on i need to let you know though that charlene my guest is a survivor of covid she had covid she has experienced it and she wants to share what it is because it's not a stigma for her or me or a lot of people in this country Again, I welcome you, Charlie. Thank you, Candy. Before I go on, can you kindly put your sentence to public because it seems that it's on friends only. So um, I'm getting people tell me that they can't, they can't okay. do it. So before I start to talk, can you, this video on it, it's on it's on okay we'll try it yeah as candy said my name is charlene and i'm a COVID survivor and i wear uh, that badge with honor why do i badge? say that I'm saying that because I find that whenever I mention COVID, everybody gets a bit antsy. Like, oh, you got COVID? And I'm like, yes. And when I put my uh, story out there with my pictures, Quite a few people came into my inbox asking me why I put the picture of me looking very bad because I did change. I mean, it wasn't like I turned myself that way. COVID ravaged me and I changed. And the reason why I put those pictures out there was the fact that I wanted people to see how serious COVID is yes. because this was I looking like a 30 year old on my 50th birthday, ran about October 16th, and then six weeks later, looking like someone who had been, you know, laid in state. I'm sorry I have to, you know, describe it that way, but that's how I saw myself. I I knew if I just put the story out there without the graphic pictures, it wouldn't make any sense because these days people don't read much. Anyway, when the post is long, they just glance and don't get the essence. But I knew putting the picture out there would make people pause and wonder, what does this mean at all? And then get their attention to therefore read. So, yeah, a little background. I, on November 13th, uh, 2020, which was Friday the 13th, by the way, I woke up with a headache, not feeling too good, a bit feverish. But I didn't think too much of it because the previous day I'd been crying. Uh, a friend died on my 50th birthday and she was being buried on the 12th of November. So I was tearful the whole day. So I kind of attributed my headache to, um, if I could say, over crying. The next day, I realized that my temperature was really bad. And I was, I felt bitterness in my mouth, felt dizzy. So I phoned my friend Lisa and she's like, girl, I think it's COVID. And I'm like, Marvin, be now. And she goes, girl, have the test, eliminate it. And then if it's not COVID, you're good to go. Then we know it's just the flu. And I'm like, I'm sure it's not the flu because I've had the flu jab. And she insisted. So I got myself tested. And it came back. The results came back on the 20th of 
November and I was positive. Things started going downhill from there. I, you know, when people ask me, uh, how does it feel to have COVID? I would say it differs from uh, person to person. But there are some similar symptoms, common symptoms that people do, you know, um, get. I, I found out that I hallucinated a lot. I felt dizzy. Uh, I lost my appetite. I lost my taste, but not smell. I could still mm -hmm. smell. I had headaches, banging headaches. I had temperatures between 38.7 and 40 degrees. I had shivers and the fever was, oh my God, off the chain. I had four nights of insomnia where I didn't have even a minute of sleep. I was awake, I would switch the light off, lay in the dark, but for four nights continuous, I had no sleep. The fifth night, mm -hmm. when I was able to sleep, it was just one nightmare after the other. And all I was seeing was dead people. I even had a out of body experience once. Then the constipation followed six days. I couldn't go to the loo. I couldn't eat any solid food. I had to rely on oats, very watery oats. After a while, I just couldn't even eat that. Luckily, when I spoke to um, my big sister, was I like, get your uh, cousin to make you some? We I'm a one, and we have uh, a, a, a food called uh, nukrubi, which in uh, chi is in poto poto. Uh, the kuyapems will say noma. So she's like, let Alice make some watery. You know, uh, I think the Nigerians call it yam porridge. Yeah. Have that and trust me, you start feeling better. So I called my cousin and she made light soup, made a version of it, a dry fish, dry smoked fish with light soup, and then topped little pieces of yam into it. That was her version of it. That's when I started drinking and eating a bit and I started gaining some strength because all I did was lie down. I couldn't sit. I had to drag myself to actually sit up in bed. And the most I could do was about five minutes. And then I'll roll over. I, 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 I had you know, um, a, a day when I wasn't sure whether I was alive, it's very difficult to explain whether I was alive or dead because I seemed to be in a strange place. I felt out of my body. You know, I collapsed three times. And at that time, I realized that God had a purpose for me because he also put some people strategically in my life. Luckily, one of these people is our host today. Oh, no. Yes. And I had my big sister in the U.S. You know, she wasn't sleeping. She was praying. She actually had a calendar. She told me later she was taking the days like day one, she woke up. And then we'll go to day two, till day 14. That she knew if I made it to day 14, I'll be out of the woods. 
now i i feel that you know getting covid was maybe god's plan of keeping me safe in the way because so many other things have happened that i understand why i have the covid now because without me getting to that COVID, I couldn't achieve or I couldn't put certain things in my life on hold. One day I'll talk about that bit uh, of my life, but today we're going to concentrate on COVID. The fact that to me, it's not a stigma. I'm trying to understand why in the Ghanaian setting, especially, I I can't talk for the other communities because I'm Ghanaian. So I would like to concentrate on Ghanaians mostly. I I am having an issue where when a friend is unwell, and I ask her, "Have you had your COVID test?" No, 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 no. It's not COVID. It can't be COVID. God forbid. No, 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 no. And I'm like, why God forbid? I mean, yes, it's deadly, but why are you acting? Are you trying to say I did something wrong to get the COVID? I'm trying to understand. So, yeah, today, this is what um, the host and I are going to explore to see if we can answer the question of why it is a stigma. Yep. My first question, though, is do you know how you caught the COVID? Because people want to know. Okay. I believe I caught the COVID from um, my, my pension baby's dad. Because here I am, I don't go out because... I, I, I was shielding at the time. I have kidney disease and hypertension. So indoors, it was most of the time. The only times I went out was the school run to drop pension baby in school and sometimes to pick him up. In dropping him, I never got out of the car. I just stopped at the school gates. He dumped up and I was off. Boom. So I wasn't going anywhere. What I think was my older son, who is 19, had a, um, had a job and he couldn't do the job from home. So he was going out to work. However, he tested and didn't have COVID. So I ruled him out. I believe I got it either by touching the door handles or the sink, the cups. I don't know any other way I could have contracted the COVID from, yeah. Right. So that's the other thing. People, remember to keep wiping your door handles, especially if someone in your home has to go out to work or do something, even shopping. When you come home, you try and wipe the door handles, the things you touch, wash your hands and all of that because even though covid is dangerous mm -hmm. and virulent when it enters your body once it's not on your body you can do things so that it doesn't get to you that's that's the main thing um another question is um at which point did you realize that you were really sick or have you ever felt as sick as you was when as you were when you had the COVID. I think that's the question you want to ask, but they asked it in a runabout way. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, what you mean by have I felt sick? Yeah, it's it's not my question. It's a question from one of the um it says oh, okay. how did you know that you had COVID? Were you have you ever been this sick before or was it well? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. I honestly, I never thought I had COVID. I'll be honest with you. I thought 
somehow it was a bad case of flu. You know, even though I kind of doubted um, the flu because I'd had my flu, I had my flu up on the 8th of October. So I kind of thought 8th, October, 14th, November, it's a bit of if I was going to react and get the flu, it would be a couple of days. So I was kind of like, mm, I'm not sure. But then as much as it felt like flu, their bodily pains, there was something very different. I can't put my finger on it, but the bitterness, I guess maybe it's the hallucinations. And you no, know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you yeah. what. I on your first day, I think it was your your on the first day, I didn't I hadn't called you. But I think on the second day when I called you, you said I don't feel well. I've got something like flu. And I said, go and drink hot water. Do you remember? I said, go and drink hot water. I'll call you back in an hour and you tell me how you feel. This is how we, we realized that this was not a normal flu. Because you at first you didn't realize that this was getting serious until it started to get serious. Yes, and yeah. you see, the, the thing is, every day came with something different. Yeah. Every day, you would sometimes wake up in the morning, no headache, and you think, whoa, I'm good today. And by 12 noon, it's either dizziness, um, belly ache, my ribs, and my back. My back felt compressed. Sometimes I felt like I couldn't, somebody was squeezing the breath out of me. So it's like every day was a different. That's the thing that is annoying about COVID because every day is a different challenge. But one thing I hated most about the COVID was the shivers, the high fever. Oh my God. It's like, non-stop shivering. Meanwhile, it felt so hot, but then I couldn't take my clothes off. I couldn't get out from under the duvet because I felt cold. I felt really cold inside, was shivering, yet my temperature was about 39. Luckily, one friend told me, I was speaking to Riri and she was like, you know what, take your socks off. And I'm like, why should I take my socks off? And she's like, that's how you lose heat. And I tried it and it worked. My body, suddenly, I didn't feel so hot on the outside and so cold in the inside. And then, you know, the shivers will give me an hour break and then it starts all over again. So that was the worst for me, the worst bit was constantly shaking in bed, I teeth chattering. And there was nothing that was up continuous, like for hours on end. So that was when, I think for me, you know, that was when I knew I was in trouble and I was really, really sick because I couldn't stop shivering. So, I mean, we're, <laughs> did you then at which point did you have to call the ambulance or you yeah, know i remember point, yeah i remember that day very vividly what happens i don't know what happens in ghana but in the uk once you test positive you have to uh download the test and trace app and you, you are given some COVID handlers. So every day you get one or two people calling you and checking. I mean, that was my experience. So sometimes I just, I got used to their number and I'm like, I can't talk, I can't be bothered, leave me alone. And I let the phone ring, ring, ring. And because I was too poorly. At a point, even my phone felt like a brick, too heavy for me to hold, so I'll let it ring and ring. 
But on the 27th of November, it was like non-stop. I would look at the number, she called about 10 times, and I'm like, why can't she, this person leave me alone? So I picked up the phone, and that was, she, this lady was on there, and I was talking to her, she's like, you know what, well, you sound really bad. I think you need medical intervention. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And she goes, you're not. And she's like, I'm going to call the ambulance. And I, I said to her, no, you can't. I can't go into a hospital in an ambulance. And she's like, why? And I'm like, I just can't. Because I don't know whether I was hallucinating or whether it was a revelation that I, it was revealed to me that don't ever go into the hospital in a, an ambulance. If you do, you're not coming back home. Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking about my pension baby. I knew the 19-year-old would be fine if something happened to me. I kept thinking about the 19-year-old, the pension baby, and thinking, oh, my God, you know, what, what would he do if something happens to me, so I'm like, no, I'm not going to go in an ambulance. And she's like, you know what? I am calling the ambulance because I would hate to call back and be told you didn't make it. Oh my I'm God. here to make sure you're okay. So she called the ambulance and gave them my details and was told to tell me to call them back. The moment I called, gave my name, she's like, you know what, the ambulance is on the way. I was sad because I'm like, oh, is, is this my last day then? Because I am not supposed to go to the hospital in an ambulance. Yet, an ambulance is on its way coming to me. I just took my handbag for some fear as you know, I was helped downstairs to come and wait for the ambulance. The crew came in, there were paramedics, two paramedics, and then, you know, they brought their whole kit, uh, blood sugar, saturation level, um, temperature, checking my lungs for infection. Uh, what else did they do? ECG. They had a mini. I didn't know, you know, everything was high tech. And the guy started smiling. He's like, your lungs are clear. So. And then she, he asked his colleague to go get something in the ambulance. So the moment the colleague left, he's like, you know what? Please, please, run. You're not going to us. Because you've got kidney problems, you've got hypertension. I mean, if you were living, if you were here alone, I will say, okay, go. But since you've got someone helping you, I will suggest you stay at home. I, I don't think it would be a good idea at all to go into a hospital. At that point, I knew that what I thought before wasn't a hallucination. It was God speaking to me that have a daughter, you have to be at home. You have to find this at home. You do not have to go into hospital. You know, the ambulance, the paramedics stayed with me for about four hours. Every hour checking, I actually called my doctor and made an appointment. The doctor called me back you know, run through some stuff with me. And she said, I mean, well, the crew say your lungs are clear, your airways are also clear. So I'm happy for you to stay, since you don't want to be in hospital, I'm happy for you to stay at home. However, when your breathing changes and becomes raspy, like having a, an asthma attack, please don't hesitate to call the, amb uh, the ambulance. And I'm like, yay. So at that point, they knew they had done their job and they left. And I went back to bed and the usual being told in the mornings, the hot water, put lemon in there. I did that. 
And I started off with a bit of honey, but later I, I kind of liked the bitter taste. So every morning with Alfio, I had my hot water with lemon. I would have um, uh, herbal tea as well. And then a friend made hibiscus drink, popularly known as Sobolo from Ghana with ginger and motherland spices. Uh, I don't know their names in English. It's Ohensia and Asubisa. You know, Brain of and Salim. One is Brain yes. of Salim, and the other one I've forgotten, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had that drink, and I would warm it and periodically uh, drink that as well. I think fluids, the hot fluids, did help. And I'll confess, I did the steaming twice. I just couldn't hack it. It's like it meant coming downstairs. And I was too weak. I did it twice. My airways cleared, and I'm like, okay, but I would lie. When people called me, I was like, have you done the steam? I'll be, yes, I've done it. I just wanted to be left alone. I'll be honest with you. Most days, I didn't want to talk. There, there were only three people. I would talk to my sister Bella, Andy, and my big brother. I just didn't have the strength. You know, I, the three of them made me feel like I was alive. I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes they will call and not talk, but just, you know, praying for me and then just telling me things. It was okay. Sometimes it would be a one-sided conversation because I, I wasn't talking. I'll just make a sound for them to know I was on the line because it was very difficult. <laughs> oh, she's gone a bit emotional, but um, <laughs> it was a tough time. It was a really <laughs> tough time. One thing I will advise people is if you are not that well, you cannot not go to the hospital um, or you cannot not call uh, the ambulance. You have to call them. One of the things that people don't have in their houses is a thermometer. Some people do not have the oxygen, you know, the oxygen testing um, thing. So they need to check, test that you have oxygen you are fully oxygenated yes your because, oxygen levels yeah, yeah your oxygen levels are very important the other thing also is that some of us some people form mucus very quickly now i am not a doctor however black people people of african descent we do not break down dairy products very well so in this time of an illness which forms mucus and the mucus is what can strangle you to death be very careful about taking in milk or dairy products at a time when that is a mucus forming agent now i am not a doctor but I have seen, I was there daily with Charlene and I have spoken to people and I know that one of the biggest problems that you can have or encounter in this illness is the forming of mucus, which then closes your airways. And, you know, I don't know, something horrible may happen. Charlene is here because she wants to share her whole problem. Now, if there are people on there who have questions to ask, you can. I will pick it up and ask her it. In the meantime, some people ask me questions when I advertised this morning. So, um, one of the questions, I mean, no question is silly. If you ask, I will ask her. It says, do you recommend not... 
I don't know. It was frozen, so it's still no. frozen, so I can't I, I didn't hear the question. Oh, something's happened to the screen, yeah. Can I use that? Uh, On lockdown. Uh, for, we should not be visiting anyone. We should not visit anyone. We should not see anyone. Just stay at home. Please stay at home. Now, with the people who don't believe, I saw a clip the other day where a woman said that it's only the rich people who get the COVID because they sit in air condition and they eat rich food. I don't know what, it was a Makola woman, a woman in the market in Ghana. She said she only eats consumre and Kobe and plantain. How is she going to get uh, COVID? Now that's very interesting because I don't know who told her this. I don't know what the answer is. Does anyone know? Charlie, what do you think? I I kind of, you see, it's one of my worries because I feel as if there's not been enough information and education. I may be wrong, but I feel as if there's not been enough information and education given to the uneducated people in the motherland because it, how on earth can one come up with such a mindset or an idea or a thinking that COVID is just a disease for rich people? The only way I can think is that one, because there's no mass testing. In Ghana, my friend told me when she was sick that they started over the malaria, you know, typhoid, everything. And I'm like, why didn't they start with the symptoms you're telling me from the symptoms I got? It's COVID. Why did they start off with COVID? And he said, there's no voluntary, there's no mandatory testing in Ghana, you literally have to ask for the COVID test and pay for it. So, and since it's expensive, they are not just going to offer anybody who comes in and says, I've got a headache, COVID test. So they'll rather check to see if you've got the malaria and stuff. So I'm assuming that the poor market woman, the Kayayo, the head porter, the street boy selling. If they are unwell, they are immediately going to attribute it to malaria because honestly, when COVID starts, it's like having malaria times three or flu times three. So it's not surprising for you know anybody back home to think I've just got malaria. I've got a bit of fever. And since they are not testing, they wouldn't know they have COVID. So somebody might die and it would be, oh, he got malaria, three days later he was gone. Obviously the rich people are testing. So they test and they find out they have COVID. And if God forbid they die, then it comes out that another rich person has died from COVID. Now, my main, my main, for me, my main worry is how did we get to the point where COVID, contracting COVID is a stigma. I'm trying very hard to understand how COVID has become a stigma because one, it's not a sexually transmitted disease. It is not like leprosy where it deforms you. Yes, it ravaged me. I did change. However, I wasn't deformed. 
So I don't see the stigma. And it's not a disease that, like I said, is transmitted sexually. So why the stigma? This is what I'm trying hard. How did it become a spiritual disease? How did it become the devil's disease? I call it the devil's disease because it's killing so many people because of the hallucinations and then me seeing too many dead people. That's why I say it's the devil's disease. I am not going on the tangent of spirituality. I'm going more on the facts of this that in my hallucinations, I was talking to dead people, seeing that so many dead people, my friends who had passed and stuff. That is why I call it the devil's disease. But I am trying very hard. I don't know what I'm missing. I would love someone in Ghana to either call in or send us a comment to, you know, try and kind of reconcile why it's a stigma. Because I'm baffled because I feel I'm trying to educate people that this thing is deadly. One person can I infect over a hundred people. Yes, so one person can yes. infect. I can go into a shop and yes. infect five people. These yes. five people in an hour can infect five separate people. Now, that is a lot of people if each person infects five different people. Different. Each person infects five. Those fives will infect more and in by in about three four hours 100 people 120 people have been infected now what people must realize is that when people are infected some some will just have the uh, disease and infect others but they will not have symptoms they are still able to infect more people. Some will get ill, but it may take two weeks. Some will get ill and they will manage to survive but be ravaged as Charlene was. And some will die. Now, do you know how strong you are that you will be able to live through this illness? No, you do not. Now, what people don't know is Charlene has a kidney issue and she has high blood pressure. However, she has survived. But some people don't. And some people have no underlying issues at all in their deck. So this, I always say is that this is like a war. We are fighting a war we cannot see. We are going through experiences we've never seen before. Some people survived the First World War, Second World War, etc. Some people survived the Spanish flu. Now, we are going through our trouble. It's a pandemic. You have to view it like that. That is what I want people to understand. After listening to Charlene's issue, you need to be aware that you have to treat people that you meet like they have it. You have to wear your mask. You should even double up your mask if you have to. You need to believe that anyone coming towards you may have COVID. If you behave like that, you may live. Because if there is another issue about how people are cutting it, I don't know. So, so that we stay alive, so that our people stay alive, our family and our friends, so that we get out of it. And I want to remind you that when the Spanish flu came, the Spanish flu came, some people lived. And we are the product of the people who lived. 
Therefore, we should also try to live so that we can have something to talk about after and continue with our lives. It is very important, very, very important indeed. There is a war out there and it's COVID, without a doubt. Charlene, have you got anything more to say? No, I'm still on the why is it, I really, why is it, I want one person to, you know, let us understand why is it a stigma, what are we missing, what is so shameful about having contracted COVID, why is it that we can't publicly say this person has contracted COVID or this person has died of COVID. Unless the person has written it down to say, no, I don't want my death discussed. I, can, I know there's privacy issues, but we are in a pandemic. So knowing what took someone out, if it's not COVID, it's fine. But if it's COVID, knowing it will protect people because if it has been in contact with this person, didn't know they had COVID. Find out they are dead through COVID. They know immediately, I'm going to test. I have to isolate. I have to keep myself away from other people. I, I think, personally, I think selfish. When you find out that you have COVID and you still, you know, go places. I mean, I had some stories which disturbed me. People testing COVID and then going into work, even in England, because, you know, they are, they are on zero contract and if they don't go to work, don't get paid. Some also, you know, um, being exposed to COVID, not having tested yet, but being exposed to we are told that once you've been in an area where someone has had COVID or you are exposed to COVID, you should isolate for 10 days because if you do, if you are not asymptomatic and you've caught it, trust me, in 10 days, the incubation period would have occurred and you will start having a few, at least a headache, a fever. Off. You see, so I personally think people who put it out there that they've got COVID, it's not, or somebody has got COVID, it's not to rejoice or to shame the person. I I think it's more of an education so that when you know this person had it, you sit down and you think, wow, I could also have it. I was only speaking to this person yesterday and this person has died of COVID. Wow, it's so close. I could get it. I'm so, you know, finding it hard to grasp the mystery around all this. If it's nothing but ignorance and selfishness, why it is, you know, considered a stigma especially amongst my Ghanaians. I, 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 I'm finding it hard. I see someone say that it's the religious. They think catching COVID is a sign of godlessness. How, how on earth can it be a sign of godlessness? Are you trying to say, well, the devil brought COVID out, so if you are not a holy person, you catch COVID. Some pastors have gotten COVID and died. How about that? Yes. Pastors, men of God. Men of God have died. And you most of those men of God did not believe that it's in America, it's happening in America, it's happening everywhere. Now I have another advice for people who think. Because that question... The question of COVID being a stigma and why people keep quiet 
if you know someone in your household has got COVID and you keep it away and say they've got malaria, you are a murderer because yes. COVID is something that will infect someone else and they may die. If you keep it to yourself and then so people do not know that something is going on in your house or regarding your brother, your friend, your sister, etc. You are perpetrating death. You are perpetrating illness. You are a super spreader. If you go out and you have COVID or you have a sore throat or you are not well and you think you have to go to a wedding, a party, etc., you are a murderer. You are a super spreader. If you think it is shameful that you should say you have a cough and a sore throat or any of these things with a headache and you'd rather say you have malaria than to admit that you do not know what it is and therefore keep away, you are an evil bitch or bastard. If you know that someone is not well around you and you dare to say oh it's not covid because you think it is shameful you know my views covid is something that is very dangerous there is no shame in covid nobody had sex and got covid no prostitute gave someone covid and then they got sick. It is in you droplets from your body. You may infect someone with COVID. So we all need to be careful how we react to what is happening now. This is not special. This is not a special thing that is happening to just Ghanaians or just the British or just the American or white man's disease. No. It may have been a Chinese man or a white man, whoever, but now it is worldwide. We are all catching it. So, so that we do not catch it, so that we do not die, so that our friends, our family do not die, I am gently asking you, if you don't care about yourself, care about someone else, please. That is all that I have to say about this we have this thing about stigma is too much we keep the wrong things we hide the wrong things and it is the wrong things that's killing us please my friend a guest on this show she's been on twice or three times we've talked about domestic violence we've talked about all sorts of things she went to Ghana at the end of December. She's dead. She will be buried tomorrow. She caught COVID. Now, some of you may think it is shameful. And in fact, when she was on my show, and I'll tell you this, she mentioned loosely that oh a friend of mine has passed people are dying blah 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 a friend of mine passed away and those people the family of the, her friend called me to abuse me because i had allowed someone to talk about their relative on my show but it had just popped out of her mouth i didn't know she was going to say that we were just talking about illness and she popped it up that same girl who called me to abuse me is the same person who was ringing other people and asked telling them that my friend had passed away now mm -hmm. you can talk about someone and you don't want yours to be talked about because what is a stigma because of what so people if you don't want trouble if you don't want your family to be talked about, don't go out. Don't go to anyone's party. 
let us wait till this thing is over so that everyone is covid free and we can all go out and nobody will mention that any member of your family as having COVID. This is what I beg of you to do. One of the biggest problems we have is education. And things are not talked about properly, so people don't understand it. Regarding this illness, everyone has their own interpretation of it. Fortunately for us in this country, that's all they talk about on the news. That's all they talk about everywhere. So we know that we shouldn't go out. We shouldn't party. We shouldn't go to restaurants. I, my birthday, I had a birthday. And my birthday, I was in my house. And I was a little bit sad, if I have to speak the truth. Because I wanted to have a party. And I had planned this party for months. I had a dress, COVID, because of COVID. I didn't have the party. I did not do anything. My beloved friend, a few friends came, Charlene came, my one or two cousins, but that was it. So people, the show has ended. Our time is up. We could go on for hours and I could keep screaming at you for hours regarding this issue. I want to thank you, Charlene. It's a very brave thing. One last thing I want you people to know is COVID is a long process. I'm Charlene so is not well. She is still not well. It is a long process. So if you want the headache on your head, go to party. But if you don't, please don't go to party. Charlene, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for coming. It's a very brave thing that you've just done. I'm sorry you still not feel well. But I know that once you've turned the corner, you are really, really blessed. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And I didn't mind at all because I'm telling you, I've become so passionate about COVID because some of these deaths have been needless. I mean, some of these people would have survived if only they knew they had walked into a place where there was COVID contamination. Some of these people would have survived if they had had a test and, you know, taken precautions taking extra care. I may be as well the same thing, but I, I have made it a, a, a point that for as long as I can, I'm going to talk about it. I am a COVID survivor, I wear that blood with Anna, and I am telling you there is no shame in contracting COVID. If you do contract COVID, be unselfish, protect your friends and family, so, uh, protect the community at large by telling. Because once you tell, you protect other people. And please, it is not like malaria. When you contract it, you do not let anybody come near you. Yeah, is Charlene, our hour is up. We have to go, otherwise I'll be in trouble. This okay. show will come on TV. So if you are in the UK, it's on Channel 7 on Sky TV. It will come what? on Saturday. It will come on on Tuesday. It will come on. So I have to be within the hour. So Charlene, thank you so much. And we will talk. I want H2. Yes, zero. Yeah, 182. Sky. Thank you. Bye-bye, my people, my listeners. Bye. Thank you. Today, I didn't mean to scream, but I did. Sorry. Bye. Bye.